good morning and welcome back to the channel. We're into part two of setting up the truck with hydrogen. Um, we're going to be constructing the framework, uh, the, it'll be just an angle line framework to mount that um, box into the back of it, into the, above the engine, above the gearbox in the back of the truck here. Um, the unit itself will have the hydrogen generator and the 12 volt pump inside and I'll show you again what, what's going on in that respect. But we're going to mount it up behind this frame over the back of the engine here. Um, try and give you a bit of a clearer indication. Just in the back here, it'll be over the top of the gearbox and it'll be sitting in, use, utilizing these brackets that are existing here now. So it'll sit into here. Um, I'll be mounting the bubbler on the side of it so that there is visible from the side of the truck. And all of this here will become obvious once it's all mounted up and, and in position. So if you've been following it at all, you'd have seen some of the componentry and I'll go over it again. But again, I must stress that if you're going to do any of this, do your research, do your research. There's been a number of comments from the first video about the hydrogen. Um, many of them bring up some very valid points. Um, it is not a straightforward thing. There's no real danger to it because there's no gas storage. It is hydrogen on demand. Simply meaning while we're traveling along, driving along, this hydrogen generator will generate sufficient um, hydrogen within the unit to provide a boost, I'll say, to the engine. We're not eliminating the diesel. It is not running 100% hydrogen, as much as that's what I would really ultimately love. It is a supplement as far as fuel is concerned. The idea of it is to enhance the diesel. Um, it doesn't matter what the fossil fuel is, you do not get 100% efficiency out of fossil fuel. Using a gas, be it LPG uh, or hydrogen or any of these other gases that you can use, it certainly gives you an improvement in uh, combustion process, in com uh, improvement in power and economy. That is what we're chasing. We're chasing the economy side of things. The, uh, the, the, the engine will run a lot smoother and it runs a lot cleaner, not just the exhaust, the engine oil and components within the engine run cleaner because there's not the byproduct going in, into the engine sump. So there's a lot of pluses for the likes of running a gaseous fuel, um, even though it is consider, considered it as a, a dual fuel. Um, it's unlike running um, LPG. LPG is still a, a, a fossil fuel. This is a, a natural gas. Uh, hydrogen is one of those components that, that the atmosphere is made up of so much hydrogen, it is very natural. So it's not a, a man-made gas, it's not a, um, uh, a gas that's in a laboratory uh, or comes out of the ground. So it runs extremely clean and you're left with water vapour as a, as a byproduct out the exhaust. So we'll go over and start making up the, um, the frame to mount the housing and that in behind here and then um, I'll have to weld it all together. So if you can bear with me, I'll, uh, I'll start and go through that process there. So let's go over and we'll start making some noise. All right, I've already cut up one piece of steel. This will be for a, a side, um, or one side. I won't bore you with the whole structure. That. We'll see what we can come up with.
only problem with this is I've got to keep trying to change angles. It'd be great to have a steel fabrication shop doing all this for you, but I don't have that. Probably like all of my projects where I'm dealing with things like this, it'll be over-engineered. So this will be a, a side there. That'll be a side. I'll cut two more and then uh, weld them all together. For those of you with a keen eye, you'll have probably noticed the old Sid Chrome ratchet. That's one that I had as a first year apprentice. I think at some point in time, everybody had a Sid Chrome toolkit of some description in their um, kit. It's been around for a long, long time. I think I got that in sort of oh, mid last century, I think. Good old tools. Uh, that's what I want to see. Is it match up? Cool. All right. We'll go and make these four pieces into one piece. Easy. Grab some magnets. The old welder is a, an oldie but a goodie. I've had that oh, since mid last century. Might be old, but it still does a good job. Well, we've just tacked the four pieces together to create the base. Um, I'll 
set the box in that in there and make sure that that there fits up before I go welding any further. And um, then I can weld it all up. It'll be nice and strong. It's a good solid base. It uh, will certainly carry the weight. Let's have a look. Okay. All right. That's a good, neat fit. That's exactly what I was hoping for. I don't want the thing slopping around in there. It will be fastened down and secured. But the, the neater the fit, the better. So that's good. I'm happy with that. So I'll we'll weld it up. And um, we'll have a retry and make sure it's doing what it's supposed to do. Then I can work out on the truck where I've got to make brackets and hang things from and the likes of the likes of that. So that'll sit into the into the cradle behind the truck. So where I'm standing will be the engine and off to this side here, which I have under here, will be the bubbler. Now I spoke about the bubbler before. So the bubbler will fit up something like that up against the side. This is fairly crude, but it's going to be effective because to have this swinging off the top mounting points when that there is three parts full of, of um, solution bouncing over corrugated roads, I can't see that holding all of that weight swinging around. So it's better to have that supported there. That will sit on a, on a plate attached to there and fastened to there. So that there will make that quite secure. Um, I could have probably fitted it inside, but with the elbows and things like that would have made it a little bit difficult. But what the idea of this is You'll be able to see the bubbles coming up through here from the bottom of that um, cylinder. You'll be able to quite literally see it. If it's inside, you can't see it. You've got to open it up to have a look. But at a glance, you'll be able to see the bubbles forming and then the gas will be uh, extracted from there into the engine. So we'll continue on. I'll weld this thing here up and I'll worry about this a little bit later. But that gives you a bit of an idea <coughs> as to how things are working. Um, it'll become all clearer once it's actually sitting on the truck. We'll weld it up and then we'll work about that a little bit later. They're only heavy when you pick them up too. Okay, we've got the bracket welded up. I'm just going to size it up for placement. So this is basically where it's going to sit in here. So it'll sit about there, just nicely between the engine and the, uh, the house body. And then the unit will sit in into there. Um, so what I will do is work out brackets to mount that to this and um, we'll fabricate all of that sort of 
business here. So it'll be it'll be an interesting exercise. Um, I'm keen to see the difference in fuel consumption, um, and if it makes it run smoother like it did on my Land Rover, I'll be very very happy with that. So for now, I'll say cheers from Team Detour, and. Um, I'll continue on with this. Keep your eye out for the, the next episode and I'll have the whole thing sitting in that in here with probably a better explanation as to how everything goes. The further along we go, the clearer it will all become. So, cheers guys. <laughs>